So, if you've watched my last video, you know how AIs learn, but there's still a big question that is left unanswered. How do my AIs do stuff? How do they move? Or more specifically, how do they think? That is what this video is all about. We're talking about neural networks. Basically, humans attempt to copy the brain to create artificial intelligence. Now, let's start in the obvious place to start. The brain. More specifically, what are neurons? Because, as I'm sure you can imagine, we, they probably have something to do with neural networks. Our brain is made up of about 100 billion of these neurons, which allow us to think and make decisions and do everything we do in our daily lives. And before I get too deep into this, I will warn you I'm not a neuroscientist, so I might be crudely oversimplifying some things, so please forgive me if I do. There's a lot of biochemistry happening with potassium and sodium channels and neurotransmitters, but let's forget about all that stuff, because that's not hugely important for building a neural network. We just need the overarching idea. Anyway, what is this neuron thing? This is Ben. He is a neuron. He has three main parts. The dendrites, which connect him to other neurons. This is where he receives his input from the other neurons. The soma is just the middle bit. No one really cares about the soma. The other important part is the axon, which is like the output of the neuron. So Ben's dendrites are connected to other neurons' axons, and his dendrites receive neurotransmitters from the axon of other neurons, which creates a small positive spike in Ben. If Ben receives enough positive spikes, he just freaks out, sending a positive spike down the axon, which then releases neurotransmitters to all neurons connected to his axon branches, which then produces a positive spike in those neurons and then rinse and repeat. So the brain is made up by connecting billions and billions of these neurons. It is also important to note that some connections between neurons are stronger than others. So if there's a strong connection between neuron A and B, but a relatively weak connection between neuron A and C, when neuron A is triggered, then the neuron B receives a much larger positive spike than the neuron C. Meaning neuron B is a lot closer to being triggered than the other neuron. Of course, there's a bunch more stuff going on in the brain that I don't understand, and even some stuff that no one understands. But we have enough information to build our own little brainy thingy, and that is what we call a neural network. So let's draw up a small segment of the connected neurons. Ah, man, that's confusing. If only there was a much neater way of representing these neurons and connections. Ah, there we go, now we're talking. So I'm sure you can figure this out, but the circles and neurons and the lines are connections between neurons. Each connection has a strength associated with it. This is what we call the weight, and it usually ranges between negative one and one. I represent this in my diagrams by thickness and color of the line. The thicker the line means the stronger the connection, and a red line means a positive connection, and a blue line means a negative connection. Pretty simple stuff. Okay, let's zoom in on a single neuron, shall we? In a neural network, a single neuron is called a perceptron. It has many connections to other perceptrons coming in and going out. Inside the circle bit, there are two processes. The first is to sum up all the connections coming into the perceptron, and the next process is known as the activation function. There are many activation functions you can use, but for this video, we're going to be looking at one of the simplest activation functions, the step function. The activation function computes how much input the neuron needs before it gets triggered. Okay, this is the function. And I know it looks a bit scary, but I mean, it really shouldn't. It's not scary. All it does is takes the sum of the inputs, which we'll call x. All it does is return 1 if x is positive and return 0 if x is 0 or negative. So now the perceptron outputs the result of the activation function to each neuron that it is connected to. These outputs are then multiplied by the weights associated with each connection and then rinse and repeat and you got a little brain. Okay, so now hopefully you kind of understand what neural network does and what's going on behind the scenes, but I really haven't explained why it works and how this can create behavior. So I'm going to explain this with a little example. Some terms to know before we start. A layer is a column of neurons. So this is layer one, also known as the input layer. And this is layer two, three, four, and so on. The final layer is also known as the output layer. Simple, right? Also, remember, weights are the strength of each connection. Also, I want to introduce the biased neuron. This is a neuron like the input neurons, but it's always set to 1. This neuron can also be connected to any neuron which isn't in the input layer. You will see why we need this later. Okay, let's begin. And this example is heavily influenced by Brandon Rara's video, 
how deep neural networks work. In this video, he demonstrates how neural networks work with a really good example. So I'm gonna borderline plagiarize what he's doing here. Um, if you haven't gone and seen it, what are you doing? Go go give it a watch. But yeah, let's get, let's get into it. Okay, now let's introduce our example. We're going to be doing some computer vision, but let's keep it ridiculously simple. Our camera sees a two by two image and pixels can only be black or white. We want it to be able to recognize checkerboard patterns. So there are two possibilities that we want either this or this. And this is our neural network, which can recognize these patterns. It's scary, I know, but to help you understand what's going on, let's show what each neuron represents. A good way to think about a neural network is that each layer is combining features from the previous layer. What do I mean by this? Well, first let's look at the input layer. We have four neurons corresponding to the four pixels from our camera. You can see that the bottom neuron in the second layer is combining the features of the top right and bottom left pixels, resulting in a diagonal line. That combined with the white diagonal line in the opposite direction creates a checkerboard pattern that we are looking for. All right, let's go over this neuron by neuron and run through the math which is working behind the scenes. In our neural network, black pixels are ones and white pixels are minus ones. So we set our input layer from the pixels. So the top left is black and therefore it's a one and the bottom right is also black, so that one's a one. And then the other two pixels are white, so this set as minus one. Let's look at the top neuron in the second layer and let's do the math. The blue lines are connections with weights of minus one and the red lines are connections with weights of one. All right, so we've got our input here and we've got our um, input neurons set up. So let's run through the math. We got one times blue line, so weight of minus one. One times minus one is minus one. It's gonna be some very difficult math in here, so watch out. One times minus one again is minus one. Bias node, which is always outputting a one, uh, times by minus one equals minus one. So we'll add this up, that equals minus three, which is less than or equal to zero, so this outputs a zero. Next one, we got one times one is one, and I'm just gonna run through this, you, you get it. Uh, plus then the bias is minus one. So this is a sum total of one, which is greater than or equal to zero, so this outputs a one, which makes sense, because this feature is found. Each, uh, each neuron is looking for a feature, and this is a diagonal line from top left to bottom right, and you can see we have that here. Whereas this one here was a white diagonal line from top left to bottom right, which wasn't found because there isn't any in the input, which is why it output a zero. All right, so it's working so far. So now let's run through some more math. Minus one times minus one is one, plus minus one times minus one is one, uh, minus one. And once again, that equals one, the output's one, and that means this feature was found, which again, it's in the input, it makes sense. Uh, and then quickly run through it. Minus one plus minus one plus minus one. That equals minus three, which outputs a zero. This feature was not found. Okay, second layer done. Pretty simple so far. Now let's have a look at the third layer. Let's look at this neuron first. So we got one and one. So one times one. I'm just gonna run through it, you, you get it. Um, so this bit was the bias neuron. And then this one, we got zero plus zero minus one equals minus one which means this neuron was activated and this one wasn't, which means we found this checkerboard pattern, which if you look closely, is the same as our input. Um, and then this final neuron just combines these two. So we got one times one is one plus zero times one is zero. Um, and the bias neuron is not connected to this. So this equals one, which means the yeah, final output is one, which means we found our checkerboard pattern, which is of course what we're looking for. So it works, beautiful. Now let's talk about the need for the bias neuron because it really didn't have much of an effect on the previous example. So let's look at a new example. This one obviously shouldn't output a one because it's simply not a checkerboard pattern. So first we need to set the inputs to represent this new image. Okay, I'll skip over layer two because that works as it should, but what's interesting is in the third layer. Let's look at the bottom neuron. Now let's remove the bias neuron and see what happens. Just quickly do the math. Zero times one is zero, plus one times one is one. So the total input is one, which means that this neuron is triggered. But hang on, the feature which this neuron was looking for was a checkerboard pattern, so it shouldn't be triggered. So what happened? If we look at the neurons in the previous layer, which this neuron is connected to, 
One of them is activated, but the other one isn't. But we want both of them to be activated. So we want the neuron in the third layer to be only activated when the total is more than one instead of the current situation, which activates on an input greater than zero. So how can we do this? Well, we could always subtract one from the total. That way the total would need to be greater than one before we subtract the one, which is what we want. Okay, now this is where the biased neuron comes in. Remember the biased neuron is always outputting a one. This multiplied by a weight of minus one gets minus one and voila, we are always subtracting one from that neuron. Now let's go over the example again. The sum is now zero times one is zero plus one times one brings us to one. Now considering the bias neuron, we add one times minus one. So now the total is reduced to zero, which means that neuron isn't triggered and voila, nailed it. As an exercise for anyone watching, try other inputs and see how the neurons activate and test it out. An input which isn't a checkerboard pattern should have neither of the output neurons output a one. Of course, neural networks get a lot more complicated than this. So it's usually not an option to manually set all the neurons and weights. This is where the genetic algorithm comes in to evolve and learn the weights which create the desirable behavior. Those with better behavior will survive and pass on its genes, which in this case is the weights. And slowly through the magic evolution, the neural network learns how to do the desired tasks, such as jumping over cacti or finding food or shooting asteroids. And I will probably make a video on how to combine neural networks and the genetic algorithm sometime in the future. So stay tuned for that. So hopefully you learned something from watching this. And if you did, you know what to be even better? Retaining that knowledge. It is very common for people to watch educational videos like this and then for them to just click away and forget about everything they just learned. Once again, Brilliant.org comes in to save the day. They have an entire course on neural networks with interactive lessons on everything from the brain to very complicated neural networks, such as convolutional neural networks, which are just insane. They break down each topic into small chunks, which makes very difficult topics, such as neural networks, super easy. The first 200 people to use this link will get 20% off an annual subscription. So if you want to deepen your understanding of the topic of neural networks and support this channel at the same time, then checking them out would be a great idea. <laughs>